We start Wake Up Seabus at 6 with breaking news. Ian has now been downgraded from a hurricane to a tropical storm. We're seeing images this morning of fierce winds, heavy rains, and destruction coming out of Florida. We do want to say good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Clay Gordon. I'm Tracy Townsend. And I'm Angela Ann. So we want to get you right to Florida right now. Connor Powell is reporting for us live in Orlando, where we know right now that Tropical Storm Ian mm -hmm. is turning over, still very strong, and a lot of people are dealing with rain this morning. Hurricane Ian may have been downgraded to Tropical Storm Ian here just in the last few minutes, but it is still bringing heavy rains and strong wind gusts. And the big concern here in Central Florida as the center of the storm moves to this region towards Orlando is flooding. Now, just in the last couple of hours, we've seen strong wind gusts and a lot of heavy rain, but mostly the wind has knocked down sort of smaller branches here around Orlando. There is some small puddling of water uh, here as we get to the sewer system, uh, uh, the drainage system here around the uh, city streets, but we're not seeing wide scale flooding so far. There are some reports in Orlando uh, that there is some flooding one to two feet in some lower level areas, but for the most part, the bigger concern is over the next 12 hours. We've had a lot of rain here in Orlando in the last 24 hours, but as the center of the storm moves to this area, we expect to see a lot more of this debris begin to fill up the drainage areas, uh, the drainage uh, sort of ditches, and then also this heavy rain just keep building, building, and building. And so you're gonna see a little bit more flooding in this area. Uh, and that's really the concern, even though this storm has been downgraded from a hurricane now to a tropical storm, it will bring wind gusts of uh, 40 to 50 miles an hour and a lot of rain. And the problem, Orlando is really just a series of canals and lakes. And so there's just not a lot of places for all this rain to go over the course of the next 24 hours or so. And so, the real concern here is the flooding, not the strong winds that we saw along the coast uh, of Florida, but the flooding here in the next couple of hours. And already we're getting some reports from the city managers uh, here in Orlando that there are a few spots of flooding, nothing widespread just yet, but a real concern going forward. Live in Orlando, Connor Powell, back to you. Hi, Connor. Thank you. Let's bring in Doppler 10 meteorologist Ross Cruz. So now we saw some of the damage there in Orlando as Ian is moving through Florida. Where is it heading, Ross? Well, the latest with now Tropical Storm Ian is the fact that it is still a very strong tropical storm. This is going to be gradually kicking out into the Atlantic as we head into this afternoon. And with that, some bigger implications in the forecast for parts of the United States and possibly making another landfall on U.S. soil as we head into tomorrow afternoon. You can see there highlighting the orange. Those are all tropical storm warnings that are in effect across Florida. And again, still very much affecting the Gulf Coast area as well. We're going to continue to see this system slowly move into the Atlantic, probably dealing with anywhere from 10 to 15 inches of rain that's falling just north of Orlando this morning up towards Daytona Beach, where we are expecting this system to then move into the Atlantic, which is going to be a problem because then once it's back into the water, it's going to continue that counterclockwise circulation. So we're going to see a lot of this rain being pulled in from the north and east and then spewed back on shore and especially the coastline there of Florida heading into the afternoon. That'll then continue to maintain strength as a very strong tropical storm, 65 miles an hour, and potentially strengthening a bit further before making landfall in what is looking to be the most northeastern extreme part of the Georgia coast there, otherwise looking like moving towards Charleston, South Carolina region as well, potentially making landfall later tomorrow. So a bunch of changes that we've seen as far as, you know, some of the impacts down and now the Atlantic coast of Florida, the Atlantic coast of the United States as well, including the Carolina coast, and then eventually seeing these remnants moving in a little bit closer to our neck of the woods for us as we head into the weekend. But that does not necessarily mean that the impacts will be worse. It's just that we're seeing it speed up a bit, which then it'll come a little bit sooner and then maybe move out a little bit earlier for us. So looking at the latest hour by hour, again, you can see just a ton of heavy rain that has been associated with the storm and no clear eye with the storm too. It's been disrupted a lot of the topography. It doesn't really like messing around with that stuff where it starts to weaken, but you can see all these heavy rain bands, which will be spewing in along the east coast there. And then that'll continue to move up towards South Carolina, probably already feeling some of the effects later today going into Friday morning. Heavy rain will be moving through and then eventually seeing that secondary landfall as we head into the end of the work week. And then by the time we head into Friday night, 
Maybe starting to see some of those upper level clouds in. The good news is with winds shifting out of the northeast for us, that's going to help to dig in, bring in some drier air. So it looks like we'll be able to fight off the rain for Friday. But Saturday looks like we'll see the potential for more of that. We'll talk more about some of the local impacts here in town, plus what some of those are still facing with what was uh, Category 4 major Hurricane Ian, now Tropical Storm Ian, coming up in a few. Ross, thank you. And as day breaks along the hard hit western Florida coast, emergency crews are getting to work. 10 TV's Tina Ramos is checking with the first responders who are from here in Ohio who headed down south. Tino. Yeah, that's right, Tracy. You know, with the storm still dragging its way across uh, Florida, today really is go time for those first responders to assess the damage, especially when it comes to the west coast of Florida. And we can also tell you that groups here in Ohio who are down there, several groups really will be digging in today, uh, taking a look and getting to work in terms of tackling what's left of what was uh, Hurricane Ian. Matter of fact, we can tell you not only the Red Cross, like here behind me, but also uh, power crews, they will be active today down there, as well as medical personnel to Ohio Task Force One. And members from Ohio's response teams are now being deployed to crucial areas where help is needed. Now, this also includes rescue efforts, considering how much flooding was occurring down there. And many of these crews started working their way down to the area earlier this week, as we had reported to you. But now they're getting their orders to move in and begin recovery. Now, this is one of the worst storms Florida has experienced, and volunteers are concerned about what they are finding from this storm as it pushed its way through. Our search and rescue guys will be, you know, maybe on boats or on foot, uh, looking for victims that need to be either rescued, evacuated, or need aid in some way. And again, these Ohio crews, they will get their first look today in terms of all the damage that's down there. And according to some of them, they say it may be a lot and they may be down there for weeks. Of course, we'll continue to follow their journey. Tino Ramos, 10TV News.